I pulled up and parked outside the police station in our medium-sized town. My mind was working feverishly, and I needed to get the anger inside me under control. I kept repeating to myself, Stay cool, watch your tongue, don't threaten that bastard, don't freak out, make sure there are witnesses. I kept repeating to myself, Don't cross the line, over and over again, as I walked to the front of the station. I walked up to the thick bulletproof window and asked in as normal a voice as I could, Is Officer Jenkins here? I'd like to talk to him. The female officer outside the window asked what this was about. I said, I'm trying to save his life. That got her attention. Two minutes later this arrogant jerk was standing in front of me, smiling as if he recognized me. Officer Jenkins, I'm David Smith. I believe you've met my wife. Now his smile turned into a smirk. I could see the word, cuck, wanting to come off his lips. What can I do for you, Mr. Smith? I thought to myself, I'm going to wipe that smirk off your face, you worthless bastard. In the calmest, most innocuous voice I was capable of, as if I were reading the news, I said, I'm here to save your life, although frankly it's probably too late. You're almost dead already. He didn't take the news very well. Are you threatening me? He put his hand on his gun as his three cop friends heard his words and headed in our direction. You goddamn coward. I raised my voice a little so his friends could hear. Not at all. I'm not threatening or going to kill you or anyone else. His buddies gathered around me and the female officer behind the glass was watching the whole thing. I let my voice return to its normal non-threatening level. See? I saw you coming out of my house this morning when I went inside. I found that the bed I usually sleep on was trashed, and you had left some stains on the sheets. My wife gave me your name, but now that I see you, I recognize you as the guy who slept with her. So I owe it to you to make sure you understand all the consequences of what you did. If you hit her, you coward. I'm going to put you away. I will drag you out and make you disappear. That's an interesting threat. I can only assume that your buddies here are not complicit in your plans to break the law. However, I didn't raise my hand against her, and I'm not threatening you. I'm just doing my civic duty to make sure no one dies unnecessarily. Except I suppose you too, but there's nothing I can do about it now. His cop buddies were now crowding around me. See, my wife is HIV positive, and I assume you slept with her without a condom. His buddies took a step back. About a year and a half ago, I came home early from a business trip, as I did this morning, and caught her with the guy she was working with. I kicked her out and divorced her. About a year later, she tested positive for HIV. The woman she was living with, just a friend from work, kicked her out of the apartment and her parents disowned her. She showed up at my door with her bag in her hand begging me to take her in. Well, she was my ex-wife by then, but it's still hard to turn my back on all those years together. So I let her stay in my guest room. I'll give her credit for the first time in her life she told me the truth. She told me about the positive test result. Needless to say I haven't slept with her once since the day I kicked her out. I don't know when she got the virus, but I've been tested several times, and so far I'm still negative. Can't be too careful, right? By this time his buddies have retreated two more steps back, giving Officer Jenkins and me plenty of room, but they were listening intently. So here's the thing. As far as I know my ex hasn't made love in at least six months. She's an inveterate liar and a bit of a narcissist. Alcohol doesn't improve her veracity. I'm guessing you picked her up at a bar somewhere, or maybe somewhere else. I don't really care. Like I said, she's my ex. I just want to warn you that there's a good chance you've contracted the virus. It takes about six months for it to show up in the tests, but in the meantime, you could pass it on to someone else. You're married, aren't you? I could see by the ring on his finger that he was married. 
If you have sex with your wife, you really need to use a condom until the test results come back. Tell your wife you have a urinary tract infection or something. I'm sure you're already good at lying to her. I could see the hatred in his eyes. He wanted to kill me, but there were witnesses. Good thing I decided to do it at the police station. Anyway, what kind of bastard would kill a messenger? Well, I just wanted you to know you need to start getting tested. I doubt my ex will tell you. I nodded, turned and went to the door. Have a good day. Driving away from the station, I couldn't contain the smile on my face. My wife wasn't HIV positive, and she wasn't my ex-wife yet. She would be, of course, but later. I was honest when I told Officer Jenkins that my wife was unfamiliar with the truth though I wasn't exactly honest when I told him he was infected with AIDS. Well, little lie that's on me. For the first few miles, I looked in the rearview mirror wondering if Officer Jenkins or his friends would follow me. I guess they had better things to do. It was funny to think of all the chaos going on at the station. 20 minutes later, I stopped by my favorite diner to meet my friends. I texted them this morning. I have the kind of friends who are always willing to eat together at the diner. We preferred breakfast but lunch would do as a last resort. Usually we would sit and talk and make bad jokes and exchange insults. My friends knew me all too well, and in the middle of the meal, they asked me what was bothering me. Taking a deep breath, I told them, If you can't tell your friends about your problems, who can you tell? I've always said that lunch with friends might be the best therapy a guy can get. And that day they proved me right. Man to man they supported me, and I knew their wives would too. The rest of lunch went a little somber, but I knew I wasn't alone. They told me they had my back if dishonorable officer Jenkins came after me. I'll admit I drove home feeling a lot better than I did when I left this morning. It didn't last long. When I got home, there were police cars scattered outside in a swarm of blue lights on my property. Great, I thought they were coming for me. I was stopped by an officer who seemed to recognize me. Mr. Smith, would you please park here and get out of your car? I said, I have to tell you that people know where I am and I had lunch with five witnesses. If you're planning anything, sir, would you please step out of your car? I got out, stood by my car and waited. Eventually a fat detective in a cheap suit came up to me. Mr. Smith, could you tell me where you were today? As you probably know, I went to the police station this morning, then I went to the diner to have lunch with some friends. I have witnesses who will confirm that I was there. I'd like to know their names, but you're not under suspicion at this time. So can you tell me what's going on or are you going to keep me in suspense? Neighbors report that shortly before noon, Officer Jenkins drove across your front lawn and crashed his patrol car into your porch. He then entered your house. We assume there was some sort of confrontation. We have a pretty good idea of what they were arguing about since your performance at the station this morning did not go unnoticed. Neighbors heard two gunshots. We found your wife and Officer Jenkins dead in the living room. His service revolver was fired twice. My wife was dead and the bastard was watching me to see my reaction. Not a suspect my ass. He was trying to spin this as best he could to shield the police from any accountability. You can't live half your adult life with a woman and not feel anything when they tell you she's just been murdered. For the second time today, anger and grief overwhelmed me. I intended to divorce her, but I didn't want her to die. She's not really your ex-wife, is she? You're not really divorced, are you? No, and the whole thing was just a performance at the station this morning designed to get back at Jenkins, wasn't it? I looked him in the eye and said nothing. Well, I think you got your revenge on both of them. Congratulations. If it were up to me, I'd lock you up. But technically, what you did isn't against the law. It's just something you have to live with. I'll be fine. I'm not a murderer. 
I'm not like your officer Jenkins, who shot a woman in cold blood. It didn't take a trained detective to read the expression on the faces of the policemen standing around us. It was the second time today that I was glad to have witnesses. I watched the ambulance take two gurneys out of the house, each with a body bag on it. There was nothing for me to do there, so I got back in my car and headed for my lawyer's office. After all, I didn't need this divorce anymore, but I'd better be prepared in case someone decides that lying is a bigger crime than murder.